Okay, so it's 10 o'clock, so we start our study. So we did the overview, Harold, while you were gone using Levy, and looking uh, particularly at the acrostic and, the, and some of the themes of the psalm. And today I want to look at, uh, at the Fisher, uh, let's see, I've got to turn my page, to Fisher, and we're going to do a 20 minute of Chavruta studying the Fisher, looking at how Fisher does it. Um, but I'm going to just point out a few things and offer you a few prompts. So remember, of course, whenever we look at a psalm, Fisher does not uh, number the number the number the verses. Fisher lets go of the superscription le David. Again, I want you to get disciplined in always looking at a new exploration of the psalm. Again, not a value judgment at all. It is simply to. Um, it is simply to start to become aware of what the artist, the writer, the composer is doing when they approach a psalm. Um, so Fisher's goal is to, do, is to write a poem that has spiritual depth for him from his perspective and to find he does go through it line by line usually, we've seen, but he lets go of worrying about, or sometimes it's interesting to see to what degree he does that, uh, he's not interested in a literal translation. He's interested in struggling with that meaning. So, for instance, but he stays, he stays closer than others, like then, for instance, Mitchell or Bernstein or um, some of the others we, we've looked at, uh, Manda, he stays a little closer sometimes, and this is a psalm in which he stays, well, it's interesting. So, for instance, the original Hebrew was Elecha Yudhe Vave Nafshi Esa. Um, I uh, alone, uh, I don't to you, I look up, my, body, my whole life looks up, or I look up. But now he starts with now as I sing. Where does he get now as I sing from? So this is what I love about Fisher. He's just so creative. Where does he get now as I sing? He gets that entirely from the superscription, Le David. He's trying to understand why does the psalm even have Le David? to David or for David or of David, literally. His understanding of the superscription in Le David is kind of like according to David or as David would, which is with music. So I think this is a very creative and insightful and shows uh, a deep knowledge. I really, uh, so I, I really enjoy that about Fisher that he says, now as I sing, and he says, I lift up my soul to you. And remember our discussion yesterday, nefesh means soul for sure in modern Hebrew. In biblical Hebrew, Levi keeps it to life, uh, not soul. So, um, uh, by the way, I just want to say I texted Randy, who's in Bozeman, Montana, and she says she did not say that this morning on MSNBC. But today we're studying Psalms, so I'm not going to go into what she's, uh, that whole discussion. Okay, so I lift up my soul to you. For Fisher, talking about soul is part of talking about spirituality. For him, he's not, Levy wants to stick more closely to the biblical understanding. Fisher, for Fisher, he's a spiritual writer. He is trying to really understand what it means, um, uh, what it means to have, uh, to have uh, lifting up my soul to you. So do you see what I mean? Fisher is not bound by the discussion of whether biblical Hebrew understood nefesh as soul or life. He's letting that go. He doesn't, that's not the, the debate for him. The debate for him or the, he's trying to write something and for him life is not as significant for his spiritual writing here as soul. I lift up my soul to you. I open my heart. Um, so I just wanted you to notice that and to really uh, play around with that as we do this. So what I want you to do, we're going to split you up into groups of about three. And Harold, we have a new person in our class who introduced herself yesterday, and we're very happy to have. Uh, uh, are you here today? Uh, Julia, there you are. So Julia, periodically we do this. We go into breakout groups. Of, of a, it's Chavruta in Jewish study is traditionally a partnership, two people. We used to do three because sometimes we lose people. 
So going to be three people to read through the Fisher translation. Read it out loud, line by line. Try to understand what Fisher is saying. See what in it re resonates with you and what you would reject. Um, Fisher, you'll see what, what does Fisher do differently or the same? And what, how do you understand what is Fisher getting out of the psalm itself? Okay, Tosh, can you uh, send us into breakout groups? We're gonna do it for about 20 minutes and then come back together. Make sure you introduce yourselves if you don't know somebody else in the class. And if you're in with Julia, make sure you welcome her as our new classmate. Ready? Okay, we're ready. <laughs> I'm a PhD, not an MD, um, to see if it's the, uh, I don't know if it's an allergy or uh, the infection, but I'm off antibiotics. Let the professionals decide. Thanks good. for asking. Okay, good. Well, Julia, so what kind of field are you in English? It's English literature? Uh, yes, I'm a, I'm a Shakespeare scholar. Wow. And I do a lot of community teaching. And I'm hoping, and so I'm really interested in the community teaching model here. Uh -huh as well as continuing to study the Psalms. And I'm even thinking of in the winter doing a community series on Shakespeare and Psalms. Wow. I'll in touch with you, Rabbi, as a possible speaker on that. Wow, that would be fabulous. Yeah, you know, one of, our, one of our models is that we do have participants uh, take some time to present on things that they've researched or their fields of art. So everybody who thinks that they'd like a little information on how the Psalms were used. We already did, was it Psalm 8 or Psalm 6 that was uh, would a work of, what a work is man. Yeah, I think that's Psalm 8. Eight. Now what? Eight. <laughs> Eight. Eight. So, uh, I would love that kind of uh, presentation, yeah, well, the Shakespeare and the Psalms. Yeah, be a couple of people, might have been Regina Linder, when we did that Psalm, did a yes. kind of Shakespeare dive about that Psalm. All right, Julia, we'll figure out a date between now and the end of October for at least you to do one session on that. Love um, it. Thank you. We would love to, CBSC would love to host it. Uh, or wherever you're hosting it, we'd love to. Uh... Okay, well, I'll keep you posted on the whole series, but I'd love to share. Yeah, absolutely. Warm up with us. There's a lot of serious Shakespeare fans in this group. Yeah. I'm one I of bet, them. you know, this is a very educated group. So. Well, we love Shakespeare. Okay, uh, all right. So let's talk a little bit about um, Jack Neiman is saying a must see Benedict Cumberbatch in Hamlet London Theater. Yes, fantastic. That's so, at the London Theater. Is that what that means? What does that mean, London Theater? It, it's, it's actually the National Theater, which yeah, is in the London. National Theater. Yeah, the National okay. Theater. But you can we have the app, so they have so many great productions and, uh, totally and it's very well filmed too. Yeah. Well, very well. Filmed. Yeah, they're, they're great. I see Sherry Dradfield, Sherry Felt Dradfield, leaning in as if she's so eager to say something. Well, I was actually just eager to uh, introduce Marianne King because she was part of our group to talk about. Okay, great. Yeah, so now we're going to go around and ask one person from each group to talk a little bit about your discussion, what you learned, what you think about the psalm, whatever came up. Uh, Are you there? Yes, I'm there. Uh, we talked about, we uh, ended on the stanza, I guess it's the fifth one down but forget my youthful mistakes. And we kind of discussed how we felt about that. Um, I was in the group with Sherry and Simon and Nina Lubin. And uh, we, we discussed like how, on the one hand, uh, who are we to ask for forgiveness for our youthful mistakes? On the other hand, um, recognizing that we made youthful mistakes is actually some progress, some sort of stepping uh, out of the despair, out of the depression, uh, recognizing a, a, a greater world, a greater world outside of oneself. Um, so hold on, are you saying you're, you didn't like the forget part of the verse or you liked the, I'm not sure, t talk a little bit more about what you guys thought of that. Um, well, we, we, we do not all agree uh, is what I'm saying. Some of us thought, well, how, how, who are we to be forgiven for our youthful discretion? But in many ways I've been thinking about, uh, we hear about on, you know, on kind of shock news, all of the bad things that people have done, well, in the, in the past. But when you think about younger life and some of the things that, you know, some of the corners uh, you may have cut, some of the abuse that you may have given verbally, 
um, we're all guilty. And somehow recognizing those faults, youthful faults, we didn't know what we were doing, kind of brings us, steps us back into humanity. Uh -huh. it's, it's a way of, for me, a way of stepping outside of um, despair and uh, aloneness, you know, being cut off. To realize how kind of universal that particular issue is, youthful yeah. mistakes. But we and we also like immediately jumped in. We had no hesitation about how meaningful uh, the different verses were to, to us. Yeah, I think this is one of his beautiful ones. I mean, I love a lot of his, yeah. uh, but I Great. find this one, they don't all hit me quite as, as, as well as this one. Thank you. Okay, who's Randy next? Randy Axelrod. So I was with Randy, a um, powerhouse combination to Randy's. And we both felt that we liked Fisher's interpretation much more than Levy because it's not as poetic, but it's shorter and it has a much more powerful punch to it. And the example that we discussed was um, Levy says, direct me, this is um, verse four, direct me to penetrate your paths, Adonai, school me in the roads you take. And Fisher says, show me your ways, teach me your paths. Yeah. yeah. And we just love that. Um, we also that know this standalone, right? Can't you imagine somebody composing something just for show me your ways, teach me your paths? That's very, that has a lot in that, just in those phrases. And again, keep remembering that sometimes what you walk away from a psalm with is a phrase, a word, or a verse. And that's the power of the psalms also. Uh, so look for those that will resonate with you, that you'll keep with you. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, and, um, the other thing was that it the whole psalm is the first person until yes. i don't know what um line this is because fisher doesn't number it but when he says guide the still I mean, soul on... concrete practicality to have the numbers isn't it it's a little easier. yes yeah. <laughs> and then it says you teach her your pattern so it changes there from the first person to um the third person, and those were the main things. Randy, did I leave something out? No. Well, I, wanna, I would like to piggyback on what Marianne talked about with that, but forget my youthful mistakes. In the original, it looks like it's talking about the youthfulness of somebody um, not connected to yud heh vav -Hey anymore, as opposed to a general forget my youthful mistakes. And that's a very uh, interesting distinction between those two. Um, also, there are no punctuations it, until you see just a uh, question mark and an uh -huh. explanation point, which I found very interesting in the Fisher. Very good. And folks, I'm sure you also noticed there's no even attempt to look at the acrostic nature of which Levy tried to do in his English and was in the original Hebrew. For Fisher, the acrostic game, so to speak, for Fisher is not is not meaningful. So he lets it go. Uh, Donna Gray. Okay, so I was with um, Betsy and Linda, and, um, you know, we got into, like, first of all, like, look, thinking about who Fisher meant when he was say, talking about you. And, um, you know, I um, mentioned that I happened to be at a Dharma talk he gave for this Smith to sit I'm signed up for. And so that I know that he, you know, so I said a little bit about the Buddhist idea of looking inside and finding, you know, you have what you aspire to, but then there's what you, um, you know, and then, then it came to, um, you know, befriending, looking at what's inside of you in your aspiration to get beyond it. But, um, we kind of got into a deep dive of starting with the, the second verse of, I know that no one who trusts will ever be ashamed. And I had a hard time wrapping my head 
around that. Um, but then, you know, we went back to the first verse, do not let me be ashamed, do not let it close. So it, um, you know, for me, I got to that it's very much about what we talk about on Yom Kippur, about, you know, missing the mark, you aspire, to, but we're, we're human beings, we miss the mark. And, um, and um, you know, Linda, who is a published poet, had some very interesting things to say about the way Fisher uses the, repet the repetition of sound, like ashamed, unashamed, deceived, deceived. And so Very that made an impression on me. And, you know, we, you know, then we ran out of time. Yeah. Um, it's just a little, little, little spice just to touch this, uh, touch this together in this kind of setting. All right, who's next, Harold? You're Frank Brokman. Okay, so I was with uh, Lisa Brown and Debbie Metric, and we had a really wonderful discussion um, about a lot of things and focused in on his line, who feels awe at what is. And we talked about a lot of other stuff, but we talked about the word awe, which is fear. And that's one of the only punctuation points in the whole. Correct, correct. Yeah. It was the only question. And, you know, we uh, looked at the word awe, which we've seen in so many, so many Psalms, so everywhere that it's not fear as we uh, in our modern life feel fear, it's more like the Heschel kind of awe and wonder. And, um, and what is, uh, you know, of course that's very Buddhist and what is, is um, we talked about what is right now at the moment, not was yesterday or today or even two minutes ago, what is, is what is. And if you're in, if you're exquisitely in the moment, you can't help but feel Oh, and wonder. Um, and Lisa and Debbie, did I did I know I, I that's just a summary. Do you want to add anything? Um, just that the, that that line seems to be his own personal interjection into the psalm. It's not you know in as much as that the rest of the psalm is an interpretation and his his poetry based on the psalm. That line seems to be doesn't seem to be reflected as far as I can see in any of the other. Sukim in the psalm itself. So that was interesting to me. And it's also, of course, the only punctuated sentence that's there. So that seems to be his his personal take on what he's he's getting from the psalm. And I'm not sure what it means, actually. Uh -huh. Like right. why he put that in there. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's that's a very big discussion, but good, good point. Uh, Ira. Hi. Uh, yeah, well, uh... Lori sort of got to got there first uh, in terms of what I was going to say, but uh, in, you know about what is. Uh, but you know, just knowing that uh, that Fisher comes to this with a Zen background. I mean, he is a Zen uh, priest. Uh, I find that use of what is very very poignant, and because, as Lori said, I mean, in Zen meditation that's sort of what you're getting to is just being with what is rather than where you go in your mind or, you know, or trying to hang on to something that feels good or push away things that feel bad, just being present with what is. And so I think that more than anything in this particular Psalm reflects uh, Fisher's background in, in Buddhism. Um, and I found, found that very meaningful. Yeah. Uh, I, I was with uh, Sarah and Ruth, and we also, like some of the other people, found that this, that Fisher's interpretation, as are many of his, his interpretations, is very, uh, we found this uh, uh, to be a little bit softer yeah. than the, uh, the original uh, Psalm and the Levy interpretation. And also, uh, again, more inward. And I, I liked very much myself, uh, his uh, interpretation of, in the second verse, let them be ashamed to uselessly deceive because they are deceived. Mm -hmm. And that's throwing in a whole different yeah. element of deception uh, yeah. that, that there's personal responsibility for, for people who are deceptive 
because they're deceiving themselves. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so again, that sort of little twist shed this verse in a very different light for me and for us. So I, I really appreciated this, uh, his, his version of the psalm very much. Beautiful, which is one of the reasons his psalms are so meaningful and powerful and popular, by the way. I mean, to have him as a Zen master himself, a Zen Buddhist, and somebody who brings as, and both, uh, I think a couple of you have spoken to him, right? Ira, you too, didn't you have an engage mm. with him? Yes, I, I was at the same talk, I guess, that Donna talk, yes. referenced. So I think, and going back to what Lisa said, I think he's responding to verse 14 in the original, by the way, the question where he, uh, the, I agree, it's his interpretation to say, who feels ought what is, it's, which I think feeds into what Ira is saying. He's creating the Buddhist, um, the ultimate Buddhist question about being at presence. Verse 14 is, only to those who hold God in awe is the divine secret revealed. And I think Fisher in some way is saying, who feels awe at what is, meaning he's rejecting that a little bit too, na too narrow a definition of awe. Anyway, that's how I read it. Okay, let's try and see if we can get every group represented. All right, so quickly then, Joan, well, we can't, but jo okay. Joan, Joan well, Friedman. Maybe tomorrow we'll continue yeah. it before we go on, because I want to hear from every group. My mother has always said, you have to deal with what is. She'll be interested to know she overlaps with his Zen priest. <laughs> um, I was studying with Linda Solomon, which I could happily have done all day. Um, we looked a lot at, at how Fisher um, was wrestling, not so much wrestling with shame, but wrestling with getting away from shame and, and, and different ways to do that. And, you know, release me from feeling shamed about what I already did and, and help me not to do the things that I will feel ashamed about. Um, and, you know, and if we can't, you know, and if that's not possible, you know, and then, you know, and then taking this other angle of, you know, if I can look beyond my small concerns and, and get this wider perspective, you know, then the shame isn't so bad. Um, and we, we compare, we compared him to Levy and, you know, sort of, it was kind of interesting seeing, I mean, there were places where Fisher was the one who was being more literal to the text uh -huh. where Levy says, you know, hasten away, you know, my, my mistakes and sins, you know, it's, you know, it's valid. It's not, it's imaginative rather than strictly literal and superficial. And, and that was a place where Fisher was more with it. And the other thing that came up that Linda said I should tell everybody, um, and I'll leave out the chain where we got there because there's not time, but my mother has always said that when a child is born, there's actually two umbilical cords. There's a physical one, but there's also a spiritual emotional one. And she said, that one is never cut, it frays. As a child grows up, it becomes more independent, it frays. And every time it frays, the mother bleeds. Wow. Ooh. Wow. Mm. Wow. Wow. All right, shall we do one more and then it's we'll hold Jeremy everybody. Lawrence. Wow. Jeremy. Hi. Um, Oops. I have too many books open. Um, uh, we talked about the fact that the psalm seems unlinear. Uh, uh, that it 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 moves between self and and God and 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 it it moves towards it moves towards a uh, I put all my trust in you, uh, but because I look only to you, but it doesn't ever discredit his self-doubt because, or her self-doubt, redeem me. Um, we, uh, it, uh, just going from the beginning, we talked about the first uh, verse as a kind of preparation for prayer and a reference to uh, the, the notion of cut away, therefore the thickening about your hearts from, from last week's Parsha, uh, the circumcision of your heart I open my heart's trust, do not let it close. We talked about ashamed, ashamed, 
uh, there, there are three shames in, in the original. Uh, Levy only does two. We talked about the word is shamed and how horrible we didn't, not one of us really, we all hated that word. Um, and um, it's a powerful, and we talked about the fact that ashamed is something that you feel other people lay on. Shame is something that other people lay on you. Um, I'm trying to get to uh, 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 the youth, it's interesting to me and to the group, one, two, three, four, five, it takes five stanzas to get to the kind of beginning of forget my youthful mistakes. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a long time to start going inward. And, um, it, but, and once, once inside, uh, it gets deeper towards the end. Um, lift the weight of my conduct from me, defeat my many demons, pacify the violence within me. So those three lines seem to me very, or seem to us very uh, honest about the self in a way that you wouldn't necessarily be to anyone but God. Uh huh. And that I'll verse, by the way, ends with the line, don't let me be ashamed. He comes back to it there and he's uh, interesting. Um, well, uh, anyway, did I say that I was with Malka and, and, and Jeffrey? I don't know. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you, Jeremy. Well, thank you, everybody, for the studying today. We'll continue tomorrow. And I'd like to start tomorrow with somebody reading the uh, psalm by Fisher out loud, because there is a nice rhythm to it that uh, you can't always hear just by reading it silently. So we'll start tomorrow reading it out loud and then continue with any groups we missed. And then we'll continue our study with some of the others. And is tomorrow Wednesday or Thursday? I am so Thursday. Lost. Tomorrow's Thursday. So maybe Harold and I will discuss tomorrow with everybody also the plans for the class. Yeah. All okay, right. everybody. Uh, and also, there are still, we have 40 people signed up for Friday night services. If anybody else wants to come, we have a limit of 70. We're keeping the room pretty uh, with lots of spacing. So if anybody wants to come, you know how to register. If you don't, Write to info at cbst.org if you want to register, if you want to come to services. Darina, it'll be a little hard for you to get there, but we would love you someday. Someday you'll come. Okay, bye-bye, everybody. Yeah.